Hi guys, it's Tara and welcome back to Crafting with Curly Cues. Today I have a super fun project for you. I'm going to be showing you how to create a dimensional one layer card using this adorable skating by stamp set from Avriel and one of my favorite new techniques, um, ink blending with Distress Oxide inks. You guys, I'm addicted. I don't know why I'm so late to this train, but I'm obsessed. <laughs> And I'm going to be doing it on like every project in the foreseeable future. So brace yourselves for that. So I apologize because I am um, sick right now. So my voice is like crazy and I'm hoping that it lasts the length of this video because I'll warn y'all, this is kind of a lengthy video. And the reason for that is because I'm making two cards, but they're exactly the same. So you could totally skip and just watch one if you wanted to. But um, I thought I'd put them both in here and keep it just in case anybody was, you know, bored for 18 minutes. So... <laughs> Anyway, first I'm using my little mini Misty and I am stamping this adorable little gal from the Skating by Stamp Set. I love this stamp set, you guys. I'm so excited that I finally got to use it. Um, again, I'm trying to go through my stash and I'm finding all this stuff that I'm just like, how have I not used this for the whole time I've had it? This is ridiculous. So I decided to go ahead and create two cards while I was doing this. Um, I'm not really 100% sure why. Um, I just randomly was like, why the heck not? So I am stamping on some Bristol Smooth White cardstock, and I'm doing that because it ink blends really, really well because it is such a smooth cardstock. So um, I just want to let you know that that's what I'm using. I'm adding these sweet little balloons to her hand, and I'm going to be doing one layer cards today, you guys. So there's going to be some masking involved, um, but these one layer cards, I'm going to show you how to really kind of make your one layer cards pop and like pop have an extra punch there so I'm gonna create a mask for those little balloons and I'm just using a full sticky post-it note with that my kitty just jumped on me scared the poop out of me holy cow <laughs> so while my uh, mini misty's out I'm going to stamp the inside of these cards also you guys this terrified me because I seriously thought that I had flipped my card the wrong direction <laughs> and I was like oh my gosh did I totally just jack that up um, this little guy stamped a little bit fuzzy because I didn't put a magnet on there and it moved my cardstock, but that's all right. I don't mind. The second one was totally better. And then I'm going to add the little um, sentiment and I wanted it to say skating by to say hooray. So there's my noggin in the way there. <laughs> I'm lining up that hooray on that little dachshund's back here. And the front of the card says OMG. <laughs> Is that not the cutest stamp set? And I love these fonts, you guys. I'm like obsessed. Anyway, the stamp set was super fun to color too, so this may be one of my new faves. I'm pretty, like I said, how has it just been chilling and it, I've never used it? I'm, I'm hoping other people, I've seen some comments like indicating that you guys all, not everybody, but there's others out there who have the same craft hoarding problem that I do. <laughs> it's, it's actually really fun and it, it's a good distraction when a new release comes out that I really want, that I go grab an amazing set that I've never used and I, um get creative with that because um yeah I want all the things but I don't need all the things so anyway I have a piece of Inka Dinka Do stamping mask paper here so this is just um going to create a circle mask and I just used a circle die cut you could use any circle die you have in your collection and I cut a mask out of that masking paper I'm also going to cut out my little balloons here and then I'm going to save the rest of that full sticky post-it because I can get some real good masks out of that you guys so I'm going to pop that right back on my post-it pad because there's plenty left and stamped images are often small so I can get some good use out of that. So I am going to take my first card here and I'm going to put that balloon mask on top of those balloons and then I am going to use some post-it tape to hold my card down on my little, um, my little slick mat craft mat clipboard here and I like to use the clipboard because then I can move it around and like twist it as I'm inking it's just it's super handy to put your craft mat on a clipboard you guys and then I'm going to use that circle mask and I'm going to have it kind of hanging off the side because um, it's just going to go over my little skater girl I used my bone folder to make sure those masks were adhered really well and then I'm gonna stick my stencil over the top this is a Heidi Swap stencil I'll have all the supplies listed that I use um, linked below and over at my blog so if you're interested in any of that and then I'm going to take some of my beautiful, beautiful Distress Oxide inks, you guys. Oh my word. If you are someone who has trouble ink blending, if you shy away from it because you don't like the little circles and you don't like the lines, get yourself some Distress Oxides and some Bristol Smooth White cardstock, y'all. This is phenomenal. Look, you can't even see any of the, the blends. And I'm not even using colors that are like right next to each other. I'm using picked raspberry, 
carved pumpkin and squeezed lemonade and you literally they blend so seamlessly you guys this is phenomenal I'm addicted addicted so I put those three colors on there and I just kind of went in a gradient and now watch when I peel that stencil up so cute right absolutely love it love the way these blend so here's where I'm gonna add the extra little bit of a pop okay so I have some hickory smoke distress oxide ink and I'm very extremely lightly going right around the edge of those masks so what's this what this is doing is creating just a little bit of a shadow so that when I peel these masks up, you're going to see a little bit of a shadow that makes it look like it's like raised up off the paper. So it adds dimension to your one layer card. Is that cool? Super easy to do and just really adds an extra punch to your cards. So I wanted some splatter on here also. So I just added some water to some of that picked raspberry distress ink and splattered that with a paintbrush and then used um, picket fence distress paint and just kind of flick some of that on for some white splatter and then when you peel these masks up you guys look at that is that not fabulous Ugh, I'm thrilled <laughs> beyond through like watching it again is like getting me all kinds of excited so now I'm going to do my second card and I decided to go with a completely different color palette here we got some blueprint sketch mermaid lagoon and twisted citron this may be one of my new favorite color combos y'all and I'm not even into blue and this is so pretty. So I'm starting with the dark blueprint sketch. I'm going to blend it like butter, as Laura Bassam would say, up into my Mermaid Lagoon. And then I'm going to bring in this Twisted Citron, which is such a fabulous color. And I am going to blend that into the top. And I love the green, like the vibrant green it creates where the Twisted Citron and the Mermaid Lagoon cross over. And oh, these colors, you guys, seriously, you have to go blend with some Distress Oxides. <laughs> it's phenomenal. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm thinking in my head of my next like four videos and they're all they're all gonna have that in it <laughs> So now I'm adding that adding that hickory smoke again just to get that little bit of shadow To add that extra pop Y'all my cold is kicking in. I'm like, you know how your nose gets all like kind of full my nose is getting full I feel like I'm very nasally right now. So hopefully you're not hearing it too much <laughs> I'm going to splatter in the blueprint sketch and then add some of that picket fence um, also. And then I, you could try to keep these um, masks, you guys. I went ahead and tossed them because they're so covered in ink at this point that I felt like I got use out of them. But you could totally, they're still sticky on the back, so you could totally save them if you wanted to, which is the beauty of like the Inka Dinka Do mask paper, um, you can totally save that. So there's my two backgrounds. So now I'm gonna get into the coloring. And another reason I wanted to use Bristol Smooth White is because I wanted to bust out my Zig Clean Color A Real Brush markers, which I had not used in forever and a day. And I just spent some serious time organizing my Copics and my Zigs and all my markers. I created a cute little like marker tower. I went to TJ Maxx. I freaking love TJ Maxx. TJ Maxx and Marshalls and Ross, all those kinds of places where you can just find like super random, fabulous stuff. And I found this cute little tower thing and I'm, I don't even know what you're supposed to use it for to be 100% honest. I don't know if it goes in the kitchen for like produce or if it's supposed to go in your bathroom and hold toilet paper. I don't know what this is for. But I bought it and I stuck my markers in it because <laughs> why the heck not? Um, and so I was excited because I'd been playing with my markers and I wanted to get my zigs out. And zigs for me, I will almost exclusively use them on Bristol Smooth White. It's just my absolute favorite um, cardstock to use the zigs with. It's so smooth. They just blend around. You can blend them out. I'm not blending anything with water here, you guys. I'm just blending out with the lighter tones. Um, I'm listing the colors that I'm using down in the corner there. So if you're interested in any of that, you can see that because in the supplies, I'll just go ahead and link to like the big set of zigs. So you can check that out, but I'll put the individual colors there for you so that you can see what combos I'm using just in case you're interested in that. But this cardstock with these markers makes coloring so sinking easy, you guys. And this sweet little image was so much fun to color. Like, she is adorable. So on this pink and orange and yellow card, I decided to make her a little blonde gal. And then I'm going to coordinate her little outfit with the colors that I used in the background. And I decided to try and get fancy, you guys. Like... I am going to, um, in just a moment here, start coloring her skirt, and normally, my normal MO would be to add some shadow, like, to the bottom and the top, <laughs> and call it a day, because I don't usually do the whole, like, where's my light source, and all that stuff. I just, everything I color looks like a cartoon, because it's not realistic at all, 
But I decided to try to add some of these little pleats to her skirt. And um, let me tell you, this was super fun, you guys. So I just started with my darkest color. This happens to be the purple. And I added where it would be darkest in the deep down of the pleat. And then I came in with my medium tone, which is the pink. And I kind of just expanded that a little bit. And then I just blended it all out with my lightest tone, which is the pink. And actually, or the fluorescent pink. And it's super cute on her little skirt, but I think it really pops when I color the second card and do the little blue skirt. So that was super fun. And I'd never really, I've tried some of this fanciness with like my Copics, but I'd never really tried to get fancy with my zigs, you guys. <laughs> so I tried to get fancy here and you know, let me tell you, it worked. I felt pretty good about it. So um, once her little skirt was colored, I decided to do her top in the fluorescent orange super fun too because these zigs come with these like fluorescent colors um and I rarely use them because they're just so super bright but these cards were so like retro and fabulous I feel like this is an outfit my kid would wear like in a heartbeat <laughs> like with the super bright 80s colors I just think this little skater gal is absolutely adorable so then I wanted her skates to be just like white but I you got to add some color right so I went ahead and colored little toes to match her skirt and then I'm going to come in with the rest of the skate and just use some grays and that is when I will finally pull in um, a little bit of a water brush. I'm going to grab my water brush to blend that out almost like you would use a colorless blender with Copics so that way the skates still look white but they have some shadow so it doesn't look like they're um, completely flat when the rest of her is nice and dimensional. So then I used the pale gray to also put a little bit of shadow underneath her so she's not just hanging out in space there. And now I'm going to dive into the balloons, you guys, and the balloons frustrated me. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Sorry, I'm a tad out of um, frame there. I'm pretty sure I pull it back in. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, so balloons are hard, you guys, because they're just a big giant sphere, right? Like, so they are hard to get the right dimension. So I've seen a couple tips and tricks and I'm, I'm trying to get better with balloons. And honestly, with Copics, I feel like I'm getting decent. Um, but the Zigs were interesting because they blend out so well on this cardstock that it got to the point where I felt like I almost blended my shadows completely out, which is part of why I came back in with my water brush and added like a highlight because the water will wick the, the color away because it was just... It was blending too well, you guys. And again, I think I do the balloons a little bit better on the second card because practice makes perfect, right? So these ones are like my trial run balloons here and they like, they suffered for it, you guys. <laughs> but I'm getting better. Um, balloons are tricky. Like it's hard to make something look that dimensional, right? Like, cause they're completely round. So I know you want the outsides to stay lighter and, um, and then have like a little glow spot, but you know, I'll keep working at it. Let's see how these balloons go. So, so for this little gal, I decided to make her a brunette because, you know, I'd already colored me a blonde and I didn't want to do exactly the same thing all over again. So I am coloring her hair in the brown and I noticed that the brown, you definitely could see the little flickies a bunch more. So I had to go back and add better flickies because my first round of flickies was not cutting it, you guys. And so I went in, I added that texture that kind of just gives her hair some texture. And then I was really careful when I went back over it that second time to only go over it with more flickies in my light color so that it didn't completely blend out that texture that I added. So um, I'm going to color her also in some crazy neon colors. So I got to bust out another fluorescent pen, which is fabulous. And I used some greens for her top, and then I'm going to come in and do, I think I'm going to color her face first. I don't know why I randomly colored her top. Do you guys have like a coloring, like, like a set way that you color? Or do you like, is it different every time? I usually color hair and then skin and then dive into the clothes, so... I'm like self-evaluating here. I find it odd that I went straight from the hair to the shirt. <laughs> I must have been really excited to use that fluorescent green. I'm using the same skin tones here that I used on the first card. Um, I think it looks a little bit different, probably because the hair is brunette. And I mean, every time you color, it's going to be just a little bit different, depending on how many shadows you add and stuff. I did use a little um, pale pink. It's called Tea Rose for her little cheeks. I think it's so sweet. She's adorable. I used some fluorescent yellow there um, on her little socks. I don't think I listed that color. Oops, but it's fluorescent yellow, y'all. 
So now I'm coming in, I'm going to do this skirt and check this out, you guys. This looks bomb. I think this looks so good when it got done. I tell you what, these were some of those cards. Do you guys ever have projects that you make and you get done and you kind of just look at them and you're like, did I seriously just make that? <laughs> these cards for me were like, these were good cards. I felt really good about these projects when they were done. I'm always tentative to do like masking because... I don't know why, but it's like every time I ink blend over masking, I end up getting my ink underneath it and it just never quite works out exactly the way I want it to. But these ones were like perfection, you guys. Like the not a single drop of this gorgeous Distress Oxide ink got underneath my, my masks and my coloring was cute and this sweet little gal is just adorable. And I made two cards at once and I felt really proud of myself. And pretty much, you guys, basically right now, anytime I can get in my craft room, I feel really proud of myself because my time, like my schedule is so crazy. So when I'm in here, I get like super stoked. <laughs> I'm like, nice work. For example, today, I actually made these cards like last week, but today I made four more cards, um, two videos worth. But seriously, I was like, okay, I'm just going to craft today. I didn't feel very good. So I watched a movie. I watched Wonder. It made me cry, you guys. Such a sweet movie. If you haven't seen it, you should totally watch it. And then I was like, what am I going to do that doesn't take too much energy that's not going to kill me while I don't feel good? And I ended up in my craft room, which I think is fabulous. <laughs> so, you know. Anyway, I'm rambling. So here I am on take number two with the balloons here. So I added some extra shadow up underneath that first balloon, and I think that helped a heck of a lot. So that was a good tip. I actually did even go back into the first card off camera and add a little bit more shadow because I was like, that looks good. I'm going to do that. <laughs> So, um, yeah, like I said, practice makes perfect, right? So now I'm going to try to go in here and get this green balloon. I don't know what the heck's going on. It looks like there's something there that I should have cut, but you know, whatevs. So I'm starting with my lightest color this time instead of my darkest color. Last time I started with my darkest color and then I'm going to add the dark shadows and then I'm just going to kind of pull some of that out with the light one. And I was struggling because I don't usually color surfaces this big with my zigs and I didn't want any like marker strokes to show, but you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said, everything I color is like, um, cartoony anyway. So, <laughs> so here I'm going to color this sweet little dachshund that I stamped on the inside. I'm only going to show you one of these cause it's really fast and simple and I did it exactly the same on both cards. So there's no new colors to use. And then I add some shadows for him and then I just colored the color to correspond with the front of the card. So that one's blue, the other one's pink. So guys, that's pretty much it because one layer card and I really resisted adding some sequins to these because, but I was like, no, I want to keep these completely flat. I want to show people that you can have a really striking, stunning, dimensional looking card and keep it completely flat. So I did add just a little itty bitty bit of the um, Nouveau crystal drops to the very center of her bows. So that's like literally the only dimension on these entire cards, you guys. So by adding that little bit of shadow behind my masked areas, do you see how it kind of creates that dimension? And you know, if you were just to glance at that really quick, you might think that I popped that white piece up on the front of the card with some foam tape. But no, it is all done one layer and super fabulous. So those are the cards for today, you guys. OMG, these turned out so stinking cute. So I am super excited that you stopped by to hang out with me today. Here is a close up of those sweet little gals that I colored. I don't even know what kind of occasion these cards are for. They're just stinking cute and I love them. So thank you so much for stopping by today. Um, I'm going to link for you to a couple other videos that you might enjoy. If you click on my face there, you can subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so very much for watching, for thumbs upping, for leaving me comments. I love hearing from you guys. Don't forget to join me on Instagram and Facebook and I will catch you soon with another video. Thanks. Bye.